our email box and you can listen back to them. So without any further ado, Dan, get started. All right, will do. Hey, thanks, Crystal. Appreciate that. Everybody excited to join you today and talk about five ways to improve your survey results. As Crystal mentioned, I'm Dan Fleetwood. I head up the research and insights platform here at Question Pro. So that platform consists of the research edition license, the, the surveys with the max diff, discrete, con, con, discrete choice, conjoint, heat map, hotspot, all of those advanced question types, along with some more advanced features, some of which we'll cover here today. Uh, also includes the communities platform. Um, and then our audience platform as well. And then any services and partnerships that we might use to help out uh, clients get the get their projects done. So that's the research platform. That is what I lead here at Question Pro. But today, let's talk about these five tips and we'll go over them um, in somewhat in depth. I would say that we'll give you, I'll give you definitely a good understanding of all of these different features. Not too in depth, but enough to make it dangerous, especially on the platform, and hopefully spark some interest on different things that you can do to really help out your, your survey results. So today we'll cover uh, how do you can create unbiased or reduce the bias in your surveys using randomization. We'll talk about customizing surveys based on answer previous answer options and questions, so really about looping. Uh, set up team testing options in our collaboration mode. Advanced analytics, talk about weighting and balancing. And then also ways that you can improve your survey results when the respondents take in the survey. Um, and around some of the data quality tools that we have. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about randomization. So obviously randomization, you can randomize answer options. You can also randomize questions in the survey in order to reduce bias and improve results. These can also be used for things like concept testing, image testing, you can even de uh, decrease survey fatigue because if you have a long survey, you can route people through different channels thus reducing the length and improving the overall uh, you know, time that it takes to complete the survey. But really randomization is used for uh, randomizing answer options or questions to reduce bias or to implement different testing inside of a survey. So the, the four types of randomization that I wanna cover today, the basic answer, op answer option randomization, advanced answer option randomization, question randomization, and then block randomization. I'll show you where each of these are inside of the Question Pro platform, and then talk a little bit more about them more in depth as well. So basic randomization, here you can find it under settings, and then answer display options, random. And this essentially does what it says, right? It randomizes the answer options so that they're not displayed in the same way to each user. Obviously, we have sure you've all used this, uh, inside of the, the platform on other survey platforms as well. The more, you know, kind of fun stuff is the advanced answer option, uh, answer option randomization where you can do things like um, randomly display all items from the list below. You can choose to randomly display a certain number of items from the list. So if you have, if you move all your answer options over here, and let's say it's a long list and you wanna randomly display five of those options. You can do that here, five of those options will display. So it can help you know, reduce the number of options that you're asking to each person in the survey. And then you can choose not to display items from the list below as well. So these are a little bit more advanced um, option randomization, especially when it comes to only displaying you know, a certain number from the actual list. Now, when things get interesting, you can uh, use question randomization. You can find that here, um, but once you enable the blocks, uh, once you have different blocks and the blocks have different questions in them, you can randomize the questions within those blocks. So um, you can find that here under question randomization um, at the block level. Once you do that, you can click on it and you get these different options. So similar to advanced randomizing answer options, you can do these on a question as well. So you can randomly display all the items from the list. So if I wanted to randomly display like what is your gender and estimated household income, I can move those over here in this area and it would randomly display um, you know, the, 
those one of those questions. I can also choose to randomly display a certain number of items from the list below. So if I wanted to randomly display one of these questions to the users, I can do that. This also works well in image or concept testing. Let's say I have four images. I want to randomly display those to a user or a respondent rather that comes in. I can easily do that here just by clicking on these, dragging them over, and then displaying those results. So really making it easy to do question randomization. Um, in addition, more advanced randomization. Let's see. It says loading for me. Is, is that what you guys see as well, Crystal or Mark? Try this. Okay. Let's try this again. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, I saw it when you exited out. Yeah, it says loading here. Um, here oh. I'll just I'll go <laughs> with I'll go with this view. I'm not sure why, but um, hopefully you guys can see that. Okay. Yep, I can see that view. You're good. Okay. Let's try. Maybe it's just that one slide. Okay, we'll just move past that slide. All right. <laughs> um, so block randomization. Essentially, you. You go into, there's a tools. I was just gonna show you how to get here. There's a tools menu item. You click the tools and then there's block randomization or block randomizer. And you can get that go, so you can get that uh, block randomization by going there. So essentially what this allows you to do is randomize blocks of questions. So there's, you can drag or drop the different blocks inside of the ra randomizer and then choose to randomly display those different blocks of questions. So. Again, could reduce bias. You could also do this to um, implement different types of um, concept or, or different types of tests inside of your survey, really make it smarter overall with some of these advanced block randomizations and, um, and logic options here. So really making it easy, you can choose to randomly display these items. You can also add quotas to it. So if you wanted to you know, make sure that you have an even distribution, you can do that as well. So. These are all different randomization options uh, inside of the, the question for research platform. So looping, let's move on to um, looping and cover this. So I'm sure we've all either used looping, heard of it, maybe we've seen it as we've been, you know, clicked around or created surveys inside of the question pro platform. So really it's when a set of questions is asked multiple times for different answer options that were selected in a previous question. So you might have a multi-select question and then based on those answer options that the respondent selected, you want to then ask some follow-up questions. So at a very basic level, we can go over this example. You know, please select all of the following pizza restaurants that you have ordered from the last six months. So there's Pizza Hut, Domino's, Papa John's, US Pizza. And then the follow-up question is, how would you rate pizza from um, the restaurant? And this can be for based on the, what the respondent selected, right? So if they selected, let's say Pizza Hut and Domino's, it would rotate this question through for both those answer options. If you have more questions, like not only how would you rate the pizza, maybe you also have, how would you relate the delivery? How would you rate the delivery experience or the ordering experience? You can have any number of questions and it'll loop through for each of the answer options selected here. So how can you enable looping inside of Question Pro? So you've probably seen it under logic here. And then the next step is going to skip logic and then enabling this looping option here. And then if you, you can have it jump or select it so it jumps to the, the follow-up question that you wanna ask, just the first one is fine. And then input the piping text and then save your logic and then you're good to go there. So making it really easy for you to enable looping inside of your survey and really add, add this piece to reduce survey length and also reduce programming time, honestly. You don't have to add a bunch of questions with show hide answer options and things like that. So it could really reduce the amount of time that you're spending in programming surveys. So looping, well, simple to implement and, and it's really a powerful tool that you can use, one, to help out with overall survey flow and also to reduce programming time as well. So I wanna talk a little bit about collaboration mode. So- oh, wait, do you wanna answer a looping question? Sure, I can answer a looping question. <laughs> can you use skip logic within looping? Can you use skip logic within looping? So you can, 
what you can do is you can base a loop off later on in, in a survey. So it doesn't have to be directly the next question. We've enabled it so you can essentially do delayed looping now. So that's something that you can do. Um, skip logic within a loop, I think it would depend on the exact use case. So I'd be happy to follow up with whoever asked that question and get a specific use case um, after the, the webinar today. But um, essentially there's different options that you can do with looping to you know, make the survey smart with, with logic and so forth. So kind of depends on the exact use case, but I, I can definitely get back with the person that asked the question. Okay, awesome. On to collaboration. All right, um, and then so collaboration. So once a survey has been programmed and you wanna get feedback or input around the survey, you can enable collaboration mode and then you can send via email a link that that person can use to join a version of the survey and they can then comment on the different questions, add in their thoughts and so forth, uh, feedback that they wanna give based on that particular survey overall or, or the question. So once you enable collaboration, you can enable the status here so you can collaborate and then you can choose if it's a distribution list or if it's everybody inside of the organization. You can choose individual collaborators like, you know, I put my email address in here and then I hit send invite, I get a link and that takes me to a collaborator's view like this where I can add comments all over the entire survey. So, you know, love the survey, just make the changes and we'll be good. You can see the timestamp of when it was added, who added it. You can also do this on a question level as well. So you can suggest changes. You can also add comments, much like when you're using, you know, different collaboration features inside of other, uh, you know, like Google Docs or, or, my, or Microsoft Word or whatever it might be, you can add these comments in and then people can go and then review those comments and choose to either enable them or, you know, approve those, those, uh, those comments or whatever they might want to do you can see that you get a log of each one here. So really helps enable, um, I think work to get done, especially now, obviously when more and more people are still working remotely and maybe you, you can't go to that person and have them, you know, pull them over and have them review the survey. Some of that, getting that feedback and insight might be a little bit more challenging, but with the collaboration view, I've, we hope to overcome some of that and being able to provide feedback uh, no matter, you know, where you are or, also outside of your organization too. So maybe you wanna share it with external partners or clients, you can share that link and get their feedback that way as well. All right, weighting and balancing. So this is a newly revised module here for us at Question Pro. We've added in some, some features, but to kind of give a baseline, obviously there's many different algorithms, formulas, techniques, thoughts, opinions on weighting and balancing, but, um, just to establish a baseline, you know, weighting and balancing is a statistical method used by researchers to get rid of bias in the survey data to reflect the variables of a general larger population. So it permits you to change the weights of variable fields um, and avoid sample bias. So if you're not familiar with weighting, really, let's say you are a men's clothing company and you know that like 80% of your, of your customers are male, Yet when you get the survey results back, it's more of a 50-50 gender split and you want to weight the data accordingly to, to account for that, to make sure that the data that you're analyzing reflects your, your target market. So, it's loading again here, all the slides out of this. So to find, to find uh, the, to find weighting, you can go to analytics, manage data and select weighting. You can go to add, once you add your question in here, here, I'll try to present again and see. That's such a strange bug. Yeah, it's not loading for some reason. Anyway, okay. It's just, it might be a little hard for people to see this, but I'm not sure. Can you go to full view and do full screen maybe? Yeah, let's see. It's weird because it was working, oh, anyway, so, you can, do a, you can do a balance weight. So a balance weight is off of a variable. So rather than in proportion, it might be a little bit hard for you guys to see, I apologize for that, but you can base it off of a percentage or you can base it off of actual variable weight, right? So 
few different ways that you can get the, the weighted data uh, or the weight the weights inside of question pro you can select the question and then either add it based on percentage or you can add it based on a weighted variable and that's what's new is previously you could only do it on percentage but now you can do it on the weighted variable and you can also base it off of multiple variables as well so if you want let me try this one more time here okay um, you can base it off of um, gender and income here. So you can base it off of two or more questions and then weight the data appropriately there. And then finally, another thing that you can do is you can import weights. So let's say you're working with your data externally and you want to, you know what weights you want to use. You can import those weights without having to go in here and add your questions in. So the ability to import weights is, is a new feature as well, but you know, weighting the data will help help you help the data overall, so it reflects the the target market that you're you're going after. If that's something that you want to do, but definitely the the weighting with having the variable and being able to import the weights is something that is is pretty new here at Question Pro, and it's an it's important feature that we got actually a lot of requests for. So, if you're familiar with weighting or you want to try it out, I would encourage you to to go to you know, do it to try it out on, on a data set and see how it works for you. But it's definitely um, a good feature to use to ensure that you have high quality survey results. All right, let's try this presentation mode here one more time, I think. Um, so I want to talk about a little about data quality. So we have built in data quality tools inside of Question Pro that you may not have seen or maybe you've seen, but we're, we're curious of how they actually worked and in, in all practicality. So Really, they can be used to flag responses based on settings that are enabled like gibberish open ends, straight liners, speeders, et cetera. And we'll talk about all of them in, in detail in just a minute here. But it's one of the, I think it's one of the most effective ways to ensure high quality data, right? To make sure that some safeguards or guardrails up on the other end to make sure that the person that is taking the survey is you know, held accountable for some of these things that they might do. And you know, when you get this data back, obviously, it's not usable for you. So you need to ensure that you're able to, to catch these people as you're doing it, especially because you know, quotas and other things might depend on this. So you can, in, inside of Question Pro, we flag these, these different answer options. Okay. So to find the different data quality tools that we have, go to analytics and manage data here, and then and then you can, some of the different data quality options that we have here are one, one word answer. So it'll identify one word answer options. So someone types in um, obviously one word in an open-ended response, it'll flag that. So you can go and review that at a later time. Additionally, pattern responses. So if someone is typing in the same word over time or there's a straight lining or zigzagging in answer options, though that pattern will be flagged so that you can go back and review to, to see if it's a legitimate response or not. Uh, similarly, we have gibberish words. So in open-ended responses, if someone is just typing keys at random and you, you want to have those answer options flagged, that's an option as well. A duplicate text uh, across responses. So this is something that you can enable and then it will check to see if their duplicate answers across uh, different responses and it'll flag it. And uh, we allow the first response to pass and add a flag for sub subsequent responses. Another one is duplicate IP address, a duplicate uh, IP address across different responses. So if you want to ensure that it's not one person repeatedly taking the survey, obviously we have some safeguards in place for that, but you can also use this if you're using, you know, third party external sample, maybe it's a list that you're not too sure of. These are these are this is something that you can enable to help identify the if there's sort of the, the same person, with the same IP address taking the survey multiple times. And if all checkboxes are selected within a multiple multiple choice question, uh, this can be flagged as well. And then speed traps. So if, if someone is completing the survey uh, at a faster average uh, or faster than average, then this can be flagged as well. So Inside of the platform, this is essentially 
what it looks like is we add a flag to the actual response and then you can click to review the response as well. So here you can see that uh, the question, what do you like about pizza? This is the value that was inputted. Obviously a bunch of you know, gibberish, uh, gibberish word was typed in. So the, that gives the reason for the flagging gibberish word. So then you can come in here and check if you wanna delete the response, throw it out, uh, or if you can unflag it if, if you review it and know it, it turns out it is a legitimate answer. Obviously this one wouldn't be, but if it's a straight liner or speeder or something like that, and you wanna unflag the response, you can, you can do that here as well. All right, let me present here. And then I have a few bonus tips that I wanted to go over. These are more practical in nature, not necessarily related to something special that Question Pro does, but always things that you wanna, you wanna keep in mind when you, are, when you are conducting a survey, setting it up, et cetera. So clear to define you know, who you want taking the survey. I think this can often go missed, especially in a lot of the surveys that I see where people send the survey out, they get all their answer, you know, they get all the answers collected. And at the end, it turns out that they didn't actually recruit the, the correct people to participate in the survey. And this is where I think screening to make sure you have the right audience is definitely paramount. And make sure you have the right people completing the survey that you want, rather than later on ending up and realizing that, oh no wait, I actually didn't, I didn't collect the, the answers from the right respondents and I didn't get those right survey results. Fundamentally, this is where you, know, you wanna make sure that you're getting the right people in. All the other stuff I talked about today is, is definitely good and will help identify some of that, but really having a clear screener, I think is, is a good reminder for you know, all of us creating surveys and keeping that in mind is making sure you're, you're initially screening for the right audience and that the sample source that you're getting it from is high quality and matches your desired audience, right? Like just taking that extra step that extra time to really review and make sure that the list you're sending out to is legitimate, that it's not filled with a bunch of, you know, dummy records or things of that nature. And also ensuring that the, the sample that you're putting through, especially if it's, you know, third party sample or maybe a list you're getting from a client that it's been vetted. And then also for third party sample, make sure that the partners you're using have those data quality tools and, and good um, safeguards in place like we do. I know for all of our audience projects, you know, there's, there's a ton of checks that we do to, to make sure that our clients are getting high quality data, whether that is through the, the self-service function that we have under audience inside of the platform that you've probably seen in a dropdown, or it's, you know, if, if we're, um, that, that's not the self-service and it's more of a managed service, you know, that's something that we do as well. But I think, you know, clearly defining who you want taking the survey, making sure you're correctly screening for them and then ensuring the sample sources is of high quality as you can get are some definite uh, bonus tips that I wanted just to bring up to, to you today and just to remind you of that. So I know there were a few, or there was a question asked um, around looping. I think there's a few more questions coming in. Yeah, so, you ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, let's, do you wanna start at the top and go to work our way down? Sure, sure. Okay, can collaboration be done after the survey is live and active? It, you can't, you need to do it before, otherwise you'll change the status from active to collaboration. So you wanna, def, you wanna do it before it's a live survey. Okay, cool. How do you get to the collaborator's view? So the collaborator's view, you can get there, what you'll get sent a link and then, or you can base it off of the, survey itself. Actually, let me just try something here. I'll just go into it. So here you can, oh, sorry. what's that? I was going to tell everybody drop questions in because even if we don't get to them live, we will send answers out afterwards. Perfect. So what you can get to the collaborative view here. So you can search or you can edit the status, go to collaborate. And then once you're inside of a survey here, let, let's say if I turn this one to collaborate, I can invite collaborators to view it or to send it to them. I send the invite, they get a link to the survey. And then essentially it's, 
It's just this particular link here. Oops, not that one. Uh, let's see. It's this link here. And then if I click on this, then you can see here that you can see the general comments. You can add a comment. Um, you can invite other people as well to send. Maybe you want to send that specific comment to an email address. And here's where you can give specific feedback for the comments, different email addresses that you want to uh, highlight or, you know, to kind of tag that person on. You can also suggest changes to the question type as well. And, and update that. So a number, number of different things that you can do inside of the, the collaboration mode. Great. Do, do, do. Let's keep going. Um, oh, this one's kind of long from Dan. Oh, he has the same name as you. Um, are, you <laughs> are you able to edit the survey questions directly from the collaborators review? You can, you, you can suggest the edits and then you can go in and then essentially approve those. Okay, that's great. Um, how are the answers to the survey logged in collaboration mode? So the answers are still logged uh, as normal, and then you can view it as a test response. But what you really get is, um, you know, those particular comments here, you can see the log here, and then you can go and approve these. If you're the admin, you can do that. And then you can see, you can still see the responses as you normally would, uh, when, when testing or when looking at those responses. Cool. Um, okay. So now we have some waiting questions. Mm -hmm. Does waiting get exported into the SPSS? Oh, I see that from Ben. Yeah. So Ben, this is actually, um, I guess, phase two of the waiting and balancing is exporting into SPSS. And I believe it's slated to come out in June or July. I can follow up with you on that for sure. But uh, step one was getting the updated waiting in, and then I know phase two was exporting to SPSS. What are some pros and cons of waiting? Yeah, so there's there's different schools of thought on this, and I won't go too much into it, but... Don't get too uh, critical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, there's definitely people that say you should wait your data, that you shouldn't wait your data. There's people that say you should only um, wait up your data or not wait it down or maybe vice versa. So there's, there's definitely different schools of thought in that how much you alter with the, the data set, how many completes do you have? Do you have a large sample that it makes sense? I think if you have a small sample size, sometimes it can bias the, the data and it's not really a true reflection. So the weighting that you do uh, you know, won't make a, a lot of sense and, and could really skew the results. So some different, different schools of thought on weighting data, but I think it largely depends on, on your comfortability with it and then um, the, the the data set that you're actually dealing with. Good to know. Um, for data quality options, is it set up per survey created? Yes, correct. Great. Answered your own question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's this next one? Would it delete just the question response or the entire respondent's question? This is when you were talking about data quality. Yeah, so it would, you can, so if you choose to unflag, uh, let me just, See if I can find the example I was working on earlier. All right, here. So this data quality, if I go under analytics and then responses here, so I can see, you can see that this response ID is flagged. And this is the one that I showed you earlier as an example, but um, what do you like about pizza? It's flagged as this value. So I can unflag this response and then it's unflagged. So it does nothing there. If let's say this response was flagged and you wanted to delete it, you could delete it there. Or you could, you could also go and you know bring this up, and then edit the response if you needed just to fix something. Maybe it was look like some gibberish words, but you could make it out. Um, you, know, you could fix it there. So it would, it would. You can delete the whole the whole question um, or the whole response. Um, that's essentially what you would do. Gotcha. Here we go. So, is there a way of flagging to the participant themselves? why they're filling in the open ended text box that their answer is not acceptable. So there are some validation options that you can do um, in terms of if it doesn't meet a minimum length requirement or um, there's a few others, but in terms of like the exact, the, it doesn't necessarily 100% match some of the different data quality options that we have here, but there are some safeguards that you can 
put in place via validation and checking there. Good to know. Um, can I place a quota weights and not kick people out of the survey, but have their survey responses flagged? You can. Yeah, you can do that. Great. Um, do, do, do. What's some more? Hold on. Is reducing bias the only reason to use randomization? I think um, it depends, you know, some of the different, the question randomization and block randomization. Th those wouldn't be so much for reducing bias, although though it could be. That would be more for um, using it for different study types, like different image. The main, so some of the main use cases that I see for the question randomization and block randomization are for image testing or I have these five questions or I have these five um, maybe different series of questions and I want to randomly display one set to a respondent. Um, and so it's really those that would be more for different study types or, or methodologies. I think really when it comes out of just at a question level and randomizing, the main reason that I'm familiar with is just to reduce, reduce bias, but there may be others that out there and other people have different schools of thought, but that's the main reason that I see it, especially when um, you're randomizing answer options in a particular question. Gotcha, cool. Can collaboration be used for live survey scripting? You can, oh. you can, yeah. So once the survey is live or you're sending it out, you've already sent it out and responses are live responses are being collected. You wouldn't want to have it in collaboration mode, but before, that process and you're initially testing it, you can use collaboration mode. Great, cool. Um, what else do we got? Um, oh, this is a good one. We have one IP, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. <laughs> Maybe not. No, um, probably what is. happens when you have one IP for all for employees if they're all at the same place? Yeah, if you have that, then you wouldn't want to enable the you wouldn't want to enable duplicate IP across responses because then it would it would flag them all. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Um no. Oh. Are there other, other questions or is that? I think that's it. Um, we can do one. Can you show, I don't think this might take too long. Can you show us how to set up quotas and weights that flag a response, but I'm not. Yeah, I think that would probably be better handled offline. So I, I can. We can um, reach out to you directly. Yeah, we'll reach out to you directly with that. Yeah. Um, I know I don't want to take up too much of people's time. Um, that's, I think those are some good Q and A's though. Yeah, no, that was really good. Um, if you have any other questions after this, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, and, and we will be sending out, out, yeah, we'll be putting all the questions and answers together and then sending them out with the video and the transcripts. Oh, can you talk a little bit more about the speeder section of data quality? Yeah, so the, the speeder section here kind of it looks at the average survey time and then it looks at the average time to complete the survey and then you can you can set the time that you want to flag if it's a um, seconds minutes hopefully it's not hours that would be a long survey but um, naturally it's there because there are those times so you can set it uh, the average time to complete it or you can base it off of um, use real time average so it'll It'll calculate, obviously it looks at the average time and then you can pick a, a deviation allowed from that average. So if it's, you know, 30 seconds, two minutes, whatever that might be, then um, you can add that, that deviation and then it will flag responses accordingly there. Cool. Well, I guess if nobody has any more questions, you know, we're going to give you back some of your time today, but we thank you so much for joining us. Um, Dan, do you have any parting wisdom? No, I would say definitely reach out to me if you have questions, feedback, insight. I love to see here and see how people are using the platform and more importantly, how they want to use it. So definitely let me know. I'm happy to 
answer questions and, and help you out or um, route you to someone that, you know, can help you. So I appreciate everybody's time today. And yeah, no, I think that about wraps it up. Awesome. Thanks so much, Dan. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.